day on some eschatological events that are gravitating towards something far more dangerous than COVID-19. As a matter of fact, I want you to understand few things. You know, I have, you know, let, let me migrate the whole subject from this pandemic to what is going to follow the, the sequence or the series of events that are going to follow and what it is supposed to be. Now, you know, a prophet of God or the prophetic ministry is to outline the mind of God and the intentions of God. God cannot do anything as the Bible has already outlined except he reveal his intentions. Then when he is doing it, then you know that he said he will do it. That is why he is doing it. I want you to know that. So I will begin what I am about to show because of the revelation I have had. And not just the thoughts of God, but the intentions in terms of revelatorical intentions of God by revelation, by divine revelation. You know, I would like us to, you know, look at it critically and carefully and uh, examine some of these two things that are, 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 must come to pass so that we will be careful to um, um, know what to do, how to behave ourselves as a church, as the body of Christ, you know, as children of God, you know, we will be able to know categorically, um, emphatically, carefully, truthfully, critically, analytically and assess most of these things that are going to come to pass so that we can also be able to know how to behave ourselves in a time in which you know uh, we are living in so i'm using the opportunity to tell everybody who is under the reach of the sound of my voice that this is a very critical moment and a very crucial time uh you know and i want you to pay rapt attention you know um ignore anybody who is trying to disturb but i block them from the page yeah because i need your rapt attention as children of god today i am going to use the opportunity you know oftentimes when i'm speaking i am addressing also the flock that are out of the out of the fold because by all means, we should be able to bring them in before the coming of the Christos. But today, do me the favor. Let me speak, you know, uh, prophetically and categorically to the church. Let me speak to the body of Christ. We are living in a very crucial time. Um, even though it is a very perilous time, the perilosity of the times in which we're living in is a very difficult time in which we are living in and all that. I don't want to concentrate on that because it has already been outlined. Perilous times shall come, you know, um, difficult moments are going to come, you know, critical moments are going to come. That's not what I am going to talk about. So let me begin from Matthew chapter 24. You know, and begin to uh, outline it downwards, and then you are going to. From verse number 44, the Bible said, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful, who then is a faithful and a wise servant, whom his Lord, when he had made ruler over his household, to give them meat, tea, to give them meat in due season. The Bible said, Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when cometh, shall find so doing. Verily, I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his good. In up for the aid. but if t an indemnity clause a crucial interjecting or interjectory statement he makes in verse number 48 of matthew chapter 24 but if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delaying my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite the fellow servants and to eat and to drink and be drunken. The Bible said, The Lord of that servant cometh in the day when he looketh not for him, and in the hour when he is not aware of, 
and shall cut the servant asunder and appoint his portion within with the hypocrites. Can you? This is a very crucial moment with the hypocrites. In other words, the everything that I've been outlined concerning the lake of fire, uh, the final judgment, and all that have been outlined for the devil and his cohorts and hypocrites. Emphatically clear. Hypocrites. Don't joke with that. It's a very serious thing. Hypocrites. And I'm going to use the opportunity, you know, so that we can be able to build up on, 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 on you know, those of you who, you know, are asking me to speak in a local dialect. I cannot do that tonight because I am speaking to a broader audience and I'm speaking to everybody. I'm speaking to children of God. These are very crucial times. And prophetically, they need to get that revelation. Do me the favor, all of you who have come on board. We need to send this message critically and crucially to all our other brothers and sisters for them to be able to understand what God, God's agenda at this critical moment, we should know that something is coming. Something is coming. Something is seriously coming. We can't joke with it. Something is coming. So I am going to, you know, take you all to uh, Book of Revelations. And I'm going to ask you to come with me, get your Bibles. This is a very serious night. I know it's very late, but you cannot even sleep. Those of you Ghanaians, you have been put on a, a lockdown. The news just came to you. So you are gravitating towards, you know, your, your, your latest news that have come to you. Revelation chapter number 12 first. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible said there was a great, there appeared in heaven a great wonder. A woman with the sun and the moon under her feet. Listen to that. And upon her was a crown, 12 stars, and she had a child. Her child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Daniel. And behold, a great dragon, great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and having now we are I'm, I'm, the reason why I am talking to you is because now we are gravitating towards these crucial moments. This COVID-19. Before I go to this, this COVID-19 is now gravitating towards the real end time. I'm telling you, it's the gateway. You know the way the world, the whole world is now under strict attention. Now we are all understanding that something is happening. Everybody, including somebody who is not cognizant of the fact of the eschatological events that sh should come. It is at this time that we should be listening to prophet. If somebody truly says they are a prophet or he or she is a prophet, they should be speaking the mind and the intention of the law. It's a very, very critical moment and a serious time. Nobody, you know, should be joking with this kind of thing. Now we are gravitating to the whole world now is understanding that something is happening. We don't understand fully what it is, but something is happening. And I am here to tell you what that is happening. The first thing is that we are now going to see the woman and the dragon. Then quickly we shift to the next moment. We are now getting straight to Revelation chapter 13. And when I talk about Revelation chapter 13, the whole world is going to congregate as one nation. Yesterday, G20 had a conference meeting. 
And I'm going to tell you tomorrow, God willing, when we, we meet to begin, I, that is why I've started from Revelation chapter 12. And then we can go into Revelation chapter 13. But before we do that, I will give a very good preamble. I am going to start from Revelation chapter 6. And then we can outline, you know, through the seven seals of God, the seven trumpets of God, and the seven bowls of God's anger. Then we will come to the image of the beast. The, of the beast, the antichrist, uh, and the false prophet. Then we can come, you know, to the place, uh, you know, talking about how, as I am speaking to you, the world is now discussing the solution out of this COVID-19. Solution according to world standards will open the door to Revelation 13. Everything that has been documented in all the 18 verses of Revelation 13 is going to come to pass. Strictly, now then we are getting into an age that you cannot joke as a child of God. There is no way that you can joke. See, that is why we don't have the time to be talking about, you know, uh, uh, it is well, God will do it. No, 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 no. Imoha, we are going to a, a level. Now, God will want his church to be knowledgeable of the time and the season in which they are living in. This is a very crucial time. The, the moment you are living in is too, too, too crucial. Nobody can joke with this time because if you are not careful, you are going to be, you know, ushered into receiving the mark of the beast without you knowing it. Because what the Lord has told me to now begin to tell you is that if you are thinking that the world is going to come to the place and say, now the end time has begun, that this is the mark of the beast, come and take it, it's not going to happen. This thing is going to be ushered, you know, in a cunning, in a very cunning way that before you know, you have accepted it. I'm telling you, before you know, you have accepted it. Because the mark of the beast is a technological something. Now, what the world is going through right now, if we say vaccine, Everybody will rush for it. But I am going to outline sequence of the truths of God's word. The Christians must be knowledgeable in the moment in which they are. I'm telling you, the moment in which we are, very crucial. I am not joking at all. You have never seen me this late. Talking to you, I will normally will not do that. But this is not the moment to sleep. This is not the moment to slumber as a child of God. Anybody that will escape the mark of the beast, the the antichrist, and the and the false prophet, not false prophets, one singular is going to be a system, a system, not an individual. A system. I want you to listen cr critically. It's a very, very crucial moment. So we are going to outline few sequence. We are going to be talking about few sequence. We go from here before, before. What is the sequential order of of the end time plan of God? Before are happening in our eyes. We are going to see, the, and, and that is what I'm telling you that tomorrow we are going to start a, a systematic approach, you know, into it. The tribulation, the mark, because God will also have an identifying systematic, you know, uh, mark in the process before the rapture. Now, Anybody that will be raptured, I will, I will talk about the rapture in a whole session. But before we will do that, I want to tell you that the Lord can never rapture anybody without purity. This purity commodity is the most expensive commodity as I'm seeing you right now. The church is not ready. 
The church is not ready. This is the revelation the Lord showed me. When I look at the preparedness of the body of Christ, I realize, ladies and gentlemen, that the church is not ready. And that is why we, instead of panicking and getting confused, going crazy with the world, let us be able to come out of them and be separated among them. This is the time to come out. And be separated among from them and, and you know and set ourselves apart. The, the God of the Bible wants to use all of us. The work to be done before the coming of the Christos is so vast, so huge. The church has a crucial assignment. Instead of getting, you know, carried away with this petty pandemic, I call it petty. I'm telling you. I'm calling this pandemic petty. I'm telling you, this little virus is making Christians so crazy because it's killing. Have you forgotten, ladies and gentlemen, have you forgotten that precious is the death in the sight of God and the, you know, precious in the sight of God are the death of the saints? Why are you afraid of, you know, things that cannot even touch you? Rather, instead of us going deeper into the mind of God and dissecting, discerning to know the intention of the Lord and what he wants to do, his plan concerning the moment in which we are living, we are rather being carried away with the world together. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. If salt loses its taste, it's good for nothing. Men cast it down and trample upon it. Wake up! Your God needs you. You are part of an army that needs to rise up and fight for the Lord. I'm telling you something very profound. Ten years. Now, Revelation 13 is staring in our faces. But before Revelation 13, God will take out his own. God is going to just snatch his own out of it. It's a very crucial thing. It's a very crucial thing. And the, the first thing, you know, that is why the Bible was talking about in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 12. I'm going to read that very quickly to you. Because the revelatorical concept or synopsis that I've been outlining in the word of the Lord has been documented in the prophet Daniel and have also been recreated by the revelation of, of John, the beloved apostle or disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, in Daniel chapter 12, the Bible was outlining something very profound in verse number 10. The Bible said, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall continue to do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand from but and, and from that time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away and the abomination that make a desolate set up the bible said it shall be a thousand and two hundred and ninety days there are some and i am going to take my time so that we can outline these figures what does it mean and the Bible has already made it clear in Revelation. Tell you because so much of in Revelation chapter number thirteen, the mark of the beast, the last verse, Revelation chapter thirteen, verse number eighteen. The Bible talk about the value of the mark, the image of the beast. He says, "He that is knowledgeable, let him calculate the mark or the number of the beast, for it is six six six. I am going to also take my time and let's do a whole." session on 666 666 we should talk can you do me a favor and share the page please do me a favor and share the page i want you to get everybody on board the christians must be knowledgeable of this apocalypse and revelation I'm telling you, because if we are knowledgeable of the plan of god we will not be panicking and you know i don't get us Wake up, people! Wake up! The church has been in a slumber. Wake up! Your God has a plan. Why don't you seek the mind of your God, rather? 
There are so many things that are going on and going on. And all these things are gravitating, paving the way. You know, they will bring in something. You know, without the system, you cannot buy, you cannot sell. I'm telling you. And this is where God will rapture or snatch his own of it. I want to talk to you. And so we are going to do different sessions. We will do rapture. But before we do rapture, I will do the introduction of the end time plan of God. We will start from Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11 and 12. By chapter 12, we will be talking about the woman and her baby and the red dragon. We will explain revelatorically what it means. But before we do that, we will talk about, you know, uh, the the seven seals of God's anger, the seven trumpets of God's anger, and then the seven bows of the plagues that will be released upon the earth. Then, right after that, we will come, you know, to talk about the red dragon, and then we will talk about the mark of the beast, 666. We will talk about the Antichrist, which is a system, and then we will talk about uh, categorically uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the false prophet. Then we will calculate the image of the beast, 666. When we finish that, we will talk about the new Jerusalem. But before we talk about new Jerusalem, before we will talk about the new Jerusalem, we will talk about Babylon that will go. Then, when we talk about Babylon, we talk about the battle of Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon. We are going deep into the revelation and deal with deep eschatological concept, the mind of God, the plan of God concerning this end time. This is where I expect your prophets, most of them, you know, I respect so much, you know, uh, and I can see some of my very lovely friends, I salute you all, men of God. This is where I expect people who used to make noise all over the place, this is where I expect them, come let's talk Bible. Bible! Proper, exegetical, you know, hermeneutical, homiletical, apologetical, you know, eschatological, and, you know, uh, uh, interpretation of the scriptures. Serious time! We don't joke with this. We should be able to tell the ecclesia, the body of Christ, where we are going. So that they will stop panicking as like people who have no hope. They will stop this useless panicking. You know, eh, the world is going. What is going on? We are under lockdown. We don't care about lockdown. Dear you, I am here as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. God, everybody, as a missionary Christian at this moment, that you know, when you are stre you are safe, strengthening your brethren, like Jesus said to Peter, this is the time that nobody will have to joke with. It's a very Critical moment. If you miss it this time, you know me, you've missed it. I'm telling you. Everybody listening to me right now, this is the critical moment that no human being who calls themselves a child of God, a born again Christian, can ever choke with. I mean, look at the time. It's almost 1 a.m. local time, and people around the place, somebody that's watching us in Kenya, is already to it's getting to 5 a.m. in the morning. And we are already here, hearing the word of the Lord. It's not a joke. This is the time we interpret the mind of God to God's people. That they can stand in purity, holiness, righteousness, sanctity, pristinity, and live for the Lord. Huh? I'm telling you, this time, in the prayers that goes up, without these four commodities, holiness, righteousness, sanctity, purity, or pristinity, I'm telling you, it's a waste and noise. God is looking for holy hands and a pure heart, which has not lifted it itself to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That will rece receive, that will be received by God. They will see the glory of the Lord. 
And I'm going to repeat. First John chapter 5, verse number 4. He born of God overcomes the world. And this is our victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You that simply means that anybody that is washed in the blood of Christ, anybody that is sanctified the generation of the Holy Spirit, that person does not joke because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things passes away, everything becomes new. This is not the time for anybody to joke. It's a crucial prophetical moment. The prophetic moment of our time is too crucial. This is the time that will determine the crowns you receive in heaven. This is the time that determines how God will look at you and say, Good, faithful servant who have been faithful with little, come into the rest of your father and receive your crowns. This is the moment. Can you share the page for me? Share the page for me. Instead of just telling people, don't be afraid, fear not. Tell them what the plan of God is. Tell them. I keep telling people, this is a very crucial time. So when people follow you, people listen to you, people are, you know, are so great. They, you know, the moment you come on, they want to listen. Use that responsibly. Use that responsibly. Use that response. This is not a time for nonsense. This person have done this. That person have done this. This person is fake. That person is genuine. Ah, 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 ah. It's a crucial time. All the fake people, I need to get you all on board. Repent and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you, this is the end. As I bring my message to a close, I want to tell everybody that is listening, if you know the plan of God, you will never panic to, I mean, everything that presidents are locking up nations, I will prove it to you in the scriptures. It's here already. Dead bodies all over Italy, all over America, all over France, Spain, and all that kind, to the point that even, you know, uh, 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 prime ministers and presidents and their ministers and everybody, you know, are even testing to this pandemic. I'm telling you, it's all part of the plan. Nothing is a coincidence. And you know, I, I know all the arguments, uh, you know, this pandemic was created, it's all part of the plan. Created, I mean, how do you expect all that is written in the scriptures to happen if it is not human beings that are going to pre precipitate it? It is not angels that are going to be precipitated. Angels are going to come from heaven and do part of it, but we are not there yet. Human beings are going to do that. See, that is why the Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes, God has created man perfectly, but the men have sought out many inventions. That word many inventions is including people that are going to, you know, uh, develop things and all that kind of thing, including technology. And people will react to the impact of technology. Neg Negatively, it is all going to happen. It's all part. It's all part of what God has outlined. It's a very serious time. Now, I'm telling everybody who is under the reach of the sound of my voice, don't joke with this opportunity that you have. You don't want to miss this privilege. I'm telling you, don't miss can you share the page for me? It's a very serious moment. It's 1 a.m. right now. And, you know, we are all expected to be, to be sleeping by now. But we can't sleep because the uncertainty of the times in which we are living in, the most panicked people are the so-called Christians. You wouldn't believe. What is happening? What is happening? Oh, I'm running out of cash. I'm running out of this. I'm running out of that. Have you ever seen God? not able to take care of his own. You may not understand the times in which you are living. The God you serve is able to do exceedingly abundant and that also is part of the plan. He can never desert you. He can never forsake you. He can never abandon you. It's all part of the plan. I'm telling you, it's all part of the plan. 
And then we will connect this whole thing to all the eschatological contents in the scriptures, like book of Timothy, like book of Matthew, like book of Daniel, and like book of uh, 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 Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Job. We will go to Psalms. We are going to our Everything that I've been, you know, outlined in the word of the Lord. I'm telling you. And I'm telling my colleagues, men and great women of God, this time is the time to go back to the original message. The gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Not nonsense. I'm telling you, not nonsense. People are tired of all kinds of nonsense. Fear not. Fear is already sitting on our heads. The person that is going to be afraid or susceptible to the intimidations of the, of the Antichrist system, the Jezebelic system, the Antichrist system, ladies and gentlemen, are people who have no faith in Christ Jesus. But I have already told you, but this is our victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Habakkuk prophesied and made it even extremely wonderfully clear in another way. You know, he said, uh, he said for the vision in, uh, in chapter 2, verse number 1, he said, I will stand at the ramparts of my roof and I will behold what God will say and which answer I will give unto him for the vision. It's yet for an appointed time. At the end, it will speak and not lie. Even if he tarries, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. Then in verse number 3, he said, for or his soul that is lifted in him is not upright, but the just comes back to the commodity shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. By faith, you know, the elders obtain a good report, but when he gets to the point and say, through faith, these patriarchs and major did not all receive the promises of God, for they, you know, looked out for a city. They looked out for a city whose maker and architect was God. Maker and founder was God. They were not looking for promises to be fulfilled on earth. They looked for a city. The Christians now are not looking for any city. Captain of Israel's host and guide. All to all who up to all who seek the land above. It's not just a song. Captain of Israel's host and guide. All who seek the land above. There is a land above. I'm telling you, it is not enough to be saved though. We need now to be saved to save others. Too many people who are perishing. God is counting on us. You know, it's like watching champions. I'm not a, a football fan. But let me use champions list, for example. It's like watching a big football match. The president is watching. The coach is watching. The fans are watching. And there are players on the ground. God and the host of heaven, they are watching. And we are the players of the last game of this end time. We can't fail heaven. We cannot. That is what I'm telling you. Share. Share it. It's part of the game. The more we are sharing, we are pushing the gospel further. To give your life to Christ, to be anointed, and God using you. I'm not talking about title holders and clerical holders. No. The ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ. Let me conclude like this. Revelation 13 is coming, approaching. The world is going to have one currency. The world, the whole world, is not going to be Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Benin anymore. The whole world is going to be one country. It's coming. The whole world is going to... Do you see now we are all migrating to the internet? Tomorrow I will explain it to you. Tomorrow, I will explain it to you. Very soon, without the internet, you can't do anything. You cannot buy, you will not. Everything will be brought to the internet. Today, my children, you know, uh, were, one of them had an exam online. Two of them had, um, two of them had uh, 
class test online. They are sitting in their bedroom with gadgets. And they are already writing exams. Preachers are now on the internet. Church is on the internet. Offering is internet. Everything is now migrating online. Doesn't this speak to you? So that is why we are going to use eschatological means by the word of the Lord to explain to every child of God, born again, sanctified, washed in the blood of Jesus. Name are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are going to explain it to you why all these things are happening and what God expects of you and what you is expected of you and what you are supposed to do. And we should stop this petty panicking. It is a useless kind of panicking. By now, you should be teachers. Not to be taught again. By now, you should be teachers. Not to be taught again. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very crucial moment at this very moment. And you see, that is why so many people who took a lot of things for granted are now struggling to preach. Are now struggling to get their message across. I'm telling you, they have been called of God, given a profound message and given a profound revelation of what to preach. I'm telling you, stop this petty, lightweighted, Content or message, the Lord will do it for you. The Lord will make a way for you. Stop this. Let's empower the Christians to stand and face the devil. The battle of Armageddon is coming. Let's wake them up that they are soldiers of Jesus Christ. They are entire militia, men and women. Not feed me, feed me, anoint me, deliver me, pray for me. What kind of nonsense is that? Until when? Until when are they going to be children? I'm telling you, somebody. Wake them up. It's time to sound the alarm. It's time to bring the word of the Lord to the quarters of God's people. Let's wake them up. It's not enough. God will give you a husband. God will give you a wife. What about the people, husbands and wives, who don't know God? God will give you a visa. Now travel. It's too even dangerous. Me, if you give me visa now to so many countries, I won't go. You said many people watching me right now in so many other countries. If you have the privilege, you will leave. The restrictions are just too many. And I want to say this to everybody you are going to see restrictions. Tomorrow I will talk to you that this pandemic they will develop a vaccine, and the vaccine will be by restriction, they will force it will be by compulsion. Rights are going to be taken away from you. You don't believe that? Ah, your freedom to move has already been taken. Mibua, your freedom to worship has been taken. Don't you understand that when we meet and lift holy hands, there is there is an atmosphere, a force that we call the presence of God. If somebody is sick, they receive healing. And so by the time we are not empowering people and, you know, spoon-feeding Christians who have been Christians 10, 20 years, oh, don't worry, God is in charge. He will, who oh, the devil even know that God is in charge. Even Satan knows that God is in charge. Let's get to the job, the core, the pivot. I'm telling you, and get to work and stop this petty, petty, petty thing. Because I'm from Fasuomirugia. Pettiness. It's time for the gospel. The Bible said the, the, the gospel in the city of Ephesus, he prevailed. So grew mightily and prevailed. Tien yet. It's a very serious moment. The church has an assignment. 
The church has an assignment far greater than you know. You shall be rich. You shall be healthy. It shall be well with you. We have the mandate greater than that. By now, the Lord is expecting us to take the highways, the byways, the hinterlands, the stone the builders have rejected. God is expecting us to take charge by now. Taking dominion, the gates of our enemies must be possessed. This is what the Lord expects from us at this critical moment. Wake them up! They are sleeping. The church is not ready for what is coming. As a matter of fact, a lot of people do not even understand God's end time plan. It's so sad, my people. And I'm telling everybody that is watching us, too much is expected of us. Tomorrow, I'm going to use the opportunity to speak to all of you. Now we are going to talk about God's end time plan. We we'll start from Revelation chapter 6 and talk about the seven seals and go to chapter 7 and begin to talk about the seven uh, trumpets and talk about the seven bowls of God's anger and then we'll come you know try you know triumphantly and begin to talk about uh, some very very strong things like the woman and her child the dragon the red dragon and talk about Babylon the fall of Babylon the whole world system will crash you it will crash and another that is what they call the new world order will begin Revelation chapter 13 comes in. Then we will talk to you about the battle of Armageddon and I will conclude with the new Jerusalem and the second, uh, and then, you know, the second death, throwing people into the lake of fire, which is the second that the Bible said. And the eternal judgment. Then we can conclude. By the time we finish, I don't think you want any prophet or any pastor to pray for you. By the time we finish, you will know that as a child of God, there is a responsibility and a duty on your head. Let us pray. Let your anointing be like a flame and fire upon your church, your people that gathered from all around the world to watch this broadcast and everybody that is going to watch it later. I pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, empower your church, empower your people, empower the ecclesia, empower everybody that is under the reach of the sound of my voice. Let them know that the sound of the trumpet is blasting and you are sharpening the cabinet of the end time soldiers to wake up is battle time. The kingdom of God is at war with the kingdom of the devil. Master, do this for your own pleasure and glory in the name of Jesus. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and if you want your sins to be forgiven, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Today or this morning, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Father, I honor you for your favor and faithfulness for everybody who prayed this prayer with me. I ask in the name of Jesus that your goodness will explode over them like never before. In Jesus' precious name, somebody shout amen and amen. Guys, I love you. This is what God expects of us. This, huh? let me say this before I sign up. Anything less than this, the real children of God, they don't want to know. Something in them called the Holy Spirit will tell them that is rubbish. They don't want to know. We want to only know the truth, the way, the life. That's all. May the Lord grant you peace in the midst of the noise. May God be your tranquility in the midst of the decadence and the chaos in, in the name of Jesus the Christ. May the Lord keep you and bless you. May the Spirit of God reveal himself to you in a tremendous fashion. In Jesus. May you encounter God tonight. I love you. Listen, tomorrow I will come your way in a random way again. Share the page for me. I love you. Remember when righteousness becomes a lifestyle. Breakthroughs, it becomes automatic. The Lord keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good morning.